Hello and welcome to the uh, first video from Rail 150. Um, this is a model railway layout that is going to be looking back at um, the 150th anniversary of the Stockton and Darlington Railway that took place in Shildon in County Durham in 1975. I'm not trying to make an accurate representation of that uh, particular event, but I'm going to try and incorporate elements of that into this layout. Um, the layout was originally designed, or it hasn't been designed, but it's originally started as a project to entertain me and to also bring in um, the use of the children's trains where they have a range of Thomas trains and things like that. What I have done is um, built some baseboards and the baseboards have been built in a traditional style using 2 by one um, and I've used 12 millimeter ply. Um, I found that the baseboards actually sit quite well just on um, the thin legs here which are two by one plywood. I would have thought they needed a little bit more bracing but they've when you put all the tables together they've, they've worked really really well. On the construction side as well I've used uh, carriage bolts underneath holding the tables together and I've found that this if I need to move the railway because I am living in rented accommodation in Germany I should be able to separate them and take them apart. Let me just take you around what I've uh, got as a layout so far. So here will be a, a fiddle yard, uh, a place also to, to store the locomotives and I think this is going to be two tiered so I will have a raised section <clears throat> a raised section coming up over the top of this so there'll be another plat another layer of wood above this in order to keep some locomotives covered and also to give extra space. The children have um, made a papier-mâché mountain which I think is very very effective. Um, they're only uh, eight, eight years old and ten year old and they made this out of just rolled up newspaper, bits of cardboard, papier-mâché, uh, using newspaper and flour, using a 50-50 flour and water mix. They painted it um, and we're going to use this as an area to have uh, three layers of track going around. Uh, the largest radius is fourth radius, then third and then second radius on the inside. I haven't got any first radius because it seems to be pretty useless with today's um, modern rolling stock but it's probably okay with the Thomas range. You can see that it's hanging over the edge, the track, so I have to build some kind of platform to extend the plywood. And we have also, the children have also built, you see my DCC controllers here, but they've also built an area that needs to be painted that will go on the other side of the track to just finish that off. And again, I'll have some plywood at the back of this newspaper and we'll, we'll trim it off neatly and paint it up. And then we will use the Woodland Scenics range um, of static grass, of which I've still got to get a static grass applicator, but I think there's a number of people showing how to make those as well on YouTube, so we might have a go at that. Looking at the overall um, layout options that we have, uh, what we've got to do is to um, try to incorporate a station here. And what I wanted to do is allow options where trains running on any particular track could access either the outside loop or alternatively um, from the outside going to the inside loop making it uh, pretty much realistic that a train that was running around would be able to access any platform that would be in the station. Here I've got some decisions to make about what to do in this area here, whether to have it as a terminus where you'd only be able to come in from this entrance, um, but you'd also be able to obviously come in from this outside loop and also access these tracks here once these sections are completed, which I imagine uh, I would use a flexi track. Sharp-eyed people may notice that I've used SCARM. This is a free um, 
piece of software that's available to download on the internet and it was once you got used to it it was very easy to use um, moving the track around is a little bit fiddly at times but once you get used to, the, to used to using it it's it's very very effective um, and unlike others you don't have to purchase it to get more than 50 pieces of track so I found this particularly useful what I have actually done is made an error on the measurement here so um, it should have actually been a bit wider so I've got to modify that but my main focus will be at first on this um, station section this is third radius here and this is sorry yes this is third radius and this is second radius coming in to this area there uh, the useful thing about this software is it actually prints off you might not be able to zoom in on that but it prints off the um, the track that you need now I couldn't read it, it was so small when it was printed off on A4 that I had to get my uh, 10 year old daughter to read it and write all and write, write them all down. I, need, I would have needed a magnifying glass and I could just didn't have one to hand. So luckily her sharp eyes could pick out where everything went. So what this allowed me to do is once I planned the track is it prints off a, um, a list of all the items that you've used and I just emailed this to um, Hattons in Liverpool um, and they just sent this, the items through. They were reasonably priced and I had them here in Germany within three days. Um, and I think for the international postage, it was around about £12 um, for a, a box uh, this size. So this is the box they sent. Um, and it was packed full of points like this. Um, I think I ordered around about uh, 18 pieces of 18 points and there was also um, a full um, rate, a full curve, a fourth radius, so 360 degrees and also many little items like this <coughs> for joining up shorter sections of track or making it easier to apply um, joints and complete circuits. So this particular area which I'm working on now, I've actually chosen to go for this is electro frog, which means that this area here is not plastic, like some of the points that you can get. It's actually metal um, and conducting electricity. Now, what I'm going to be doing today is looking at just setting up this this section here and trying to make sure that I understand. And I've seen watch, watched plenty of videos, and it doesn't seem that it's something which is going to be beyond me but trying to work out how to prevent short circuits and to get a train able to run down here onto this piece of track um, or to go straight across. This actual section here corresponds to this particular section here, which will be the, I think the term is station throat. So this will be the entrance to the station and allowing trains to transfer <clears throat> platforms and tracks. So what I'll do is um, take a look in another video how I go about that and I'll keep you informed on any progress. So one thing I'm quite surprised about is I don't think this is an unusual combination of points, um, Pico points that people want to use. I don't think I'm the only person who wants to be able to transfer across track and to be able to go uh, down this section here and travel there. Obviously what this allows you to do is to come in and go straight across if you want to remain on the outside loop as this will be the outside loop going to the fourth radius curves or going over to this area here. Now this is the only thing which I could see to facilitate this was this X piece here which um, I can get the number of but I, it does escape me at the moment. Let's just see. It's um, ST250, this one here. Now this is a, uh, an insul frog, meaning that it's got plastic insulated areas here, not full electro, right to the point, it's, it's insulated. It's not a, an SLE, so it's set to what, what they call set track. Now one thing which I find unusual is that there isn't a piece of track that facilitates the actual joining from here to here. So what I'm hoping to use is this piece here, which is involving 
two pieces of track together, this short section here and this longer section there. Um, hopefully that, it looks like it's going to fit straight in there. What this does mean you have to do, although it does look like it might be a millimetre too long, um, what it does mean is that in order to investigate this you've got to remove some of the fish um, the fish plates, so the joiners from here, um, and you've got to be very careful. And what I've got is a very fine, I've got a needle nose kind of um, plier to do that. And if you're very, very careful, it does come off without too much uh, drama. So I'm going to see if this fits together now. Okay, so um, after putting this together, one thing which I can see straight away is that it's uh, slightly too short here using these pieces of set track to try to get a, to bridge that gap. Also, it necessitates having to cut off a little bit of the sleeper here in order to make it fit. So what I think I am going to do is measure a piece of flexi track to fit into there. So I'll join this X piece in then measure the distance and use flexi track um, and see what look I have with that. Okay, so sometime later, um, this is the track that I laid down. Earlier on, I was talking about a piece that needed to be um, soldered uh, to be cut, and that is this section here. And this is to get these X's to work is 11.8 um, centimeters. I was going to use some combination of set track, but it just didn't work, so I had to end up cutting flexi track. And that seemed to work okay. It's 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 done the job. One thing I've got to say though is these X's, these X points here, are very unforgiving on older locomotives. So what I'm going to do is just set up a um, a couple of um, locos, and we can see how they how they're going to perform. What I'm going to put on is a uh, old flying Scotsman, which would have been from the 1970s. Um, our, I can't remember the number, probably, uh, is it 478? I can't remember, but it's it's the old Triang Hornby Flying Scotsman. It's a nice model. Um, it's got the like the chuffing tender sound effects. It's very nostalgic, but it performs well, but it seems to struggle on this particular um, section. Uh, another one which I've got which definitely can't perform is an old Midland Railway. Is it Midland Railway? Oh, actually, it looks like it's got Robbie, Robbie Burns on, so it must be some kind of uh, Scottish loco from a, I imagine, from one of the budget range of old Hornby's. Got, got a broken chimney, but it was a present um, for my little son from my from my dad, from his grandfather. It doesn't work at all on this section, and I can only say that it's probably down to the flanges. Um, but it, it just gets stuck everywhere. As soon as it goes to somewhere where there's a bit of track that joins up, certainly on these electro point frogs, it just it just st stops completely. Um, but I do have an old, sorry, a new <laughs> flying Scotsman. It's the NRM wartime black that performs perfectly well, and I can only again imagine that it's set up for this more modern track and. Anybody who watches this video has more experience than I do, um, they'll be very welcome to receive any comments regarding that. But what I'm going to do is pause the video for a second and just set, first of all, the 1970s Flying Scotsman. I think it's a 1974, and we'll see how that performs. So, so I'm sorry if it's a bit dark. It's um, The sun is going down and it's starting, the, the lights in the room aren't very good. However, hopefully you can see what's going on there. Um, what we've got here is the old flying Scotsman, but I think before I show you that, I'll just um, quickly show you the reason why the track isn't finished. It's just literally prototype in this particular section. So it is very short. Additionally, I'm using just DC locos. Nothing's been DCC'd so far. And I'm just using an old Backman controller to perform that. And again, very much uh, um, prototyping, just wires hanging down. But I have started setting up um, dropper wires from the track, and I, this wouldn't have performed at all without any dropper wires. 
they are left bare at the moment. That is, again, just for prototyping. Nothing is touching or shorting out, but that will not be the uh, way I'll leave it. Certainly, it's not going to be effective, but certainly for solving problems, I'm not going to start using scotch blocks or other more permanent methods while there may be problems. Um, and I just drilled holes through the track for those drop wires to come through. There is a bit of a dead section uh, just here. Um, and it only works when the points are set in that direction. So I'll probably end up putting a drop of wire on this particular area here. And it's because obviously these are electro frogs, so they're insulated. So I'll, I'll make a feed in there. All right, so let's see how this one performs. We're just going to set the points so they go straight across. So change the direction. And she does get across. However, you can notice that the tender, the wheel at the back has uh, come has come off the track, it's derailed. Um, and that's not a great state of affairs. The locomotive has made it, but the tender certainly hasn't. I think what happens is that the pony truck at the back, I think it's the pony truck, um, is lifting up into the air and possibly dragging that tender up with it and throwing, them, throwing it off the track. So if I was to reverse direction now, it's going to be a horrible problem. But again, it still makes it. So let's just put it on one more time and just see if we can maybe capture on film. Incidentally, these things are invaluable for doing proper wire stripping. Um, they've been extremely useful for me today. It saves a lot of time. Right. <clears throat> so let's just go again. Um, so, it managed to keep all the wheels on there, but it made a bit of a racket. Okay, so we just reverse uh, the points to try and set it on this track um, here. And we'll see how we get on with that. Going backwards is probably going to be a bit more of a challenge. Yeah, so what's taken? Place there. Oh, there she goes. And off. So, can't be in two places at once. I could do a co driver to test this out. Alright, so um, pretty ropey. Next, um, I'm glad she didn't fall off the back there. Next, we will use. Uh, we have Thomas. So, we'll set Thomas going in that direction there, and just following the same route as what the fine Scotsman has just done. Now, Thomas hasn't been used for a long time. Um, he's quite interesting though, he's got moving eyes. It's one of the backmen, I think the imports, but his eyes move, but he hasn't been used for a long time, so he's a little bit rough. But no problem for Thomas. Little wheels, I suppose. Um, let's see if he goes straight on. Yeah, good. So Thomas is okay. <clears throat> let's have a look at this Caledonian track now. Try and make him just go straight across. Too bad. It could have been worse. Send it back. And again, jumping. Uh, jumping on that particular section. Now, I don't think it's going to do this particular move. So what I've done is change the points to go onto the outer section of the track. And I don't think we're going to have any success, whereas Thomas was okay. 
No. So, a bit of a sad end for the Midlands, or for Robbie Burns here. So let's just get him off the track before he causes any problems. And I think it must be down to the size of this particular area here, where the, what the wheel guides are, um, and generally the space which is in between. But this is also causing problems as well, and this is a set track. So this isn't um, Electro Frog or anything um, fancy, it's set track, and it's still causing problems, and it actually rises up on this particular area, um, and to the point where it You can actually feel it rising up. So, finally, I'll set on the, fly, the new Flying Scotsman and we'll see what difference modern wheels make. So here's the NRM Wartime Black locomotive, um, the Flying Scotsman, on the track. And I've set the track up to take it through this section here, down onto the inner in a loop there. So let's just see how this one performs. Remember this is a more modern, this is very modern. I think it's from 2012. It's a very nice model actually. Um, superbly detailed but we'll see if that um, helps her get through. So again even there it's, um, it's got some resistance. Stuck on something, so so let's so maybe go through a little bit more speed and we'll hopefully get an idea of what's going on. So yeah, through, but not pretty. Ah, oh, reversing the direction. And through. So I'll just send it through one more time, uh, going really, really slow. And remember, these are electro frog. She needs running in. However, let's just see. Well, oh, very smooth actually that time. Yeah, she's on DC, um, running on a backman power supply, so. And in need of running, running in, so maybe could be better. So there we are. Um, first part of the layout done with some success. Um, I'm just a bit disappointed that we may have trouble running older, older locomotives. I do have quite a lot of older stuff from when I was a, um, a child. I have an old um, Great Western Railway Albert Hall, and I'd like to see that running again without struggling over this particular area, so maybe I'll bring that out of the box and have a go. But if anybody has any ideas about what we can do to improve this particular area, yeah, I'll be very interested to find out. So that's the first um, video from Rail 150. Um, next video I'll show how this track is developing, a report back on any comments, um, and also, I'll start talking about what inspired me to um, to call it a Rail 150, and why I've chosen the cavalcade in from 1975 in Shildon as a, as one of my as one of my main focus points. Okay, so um, I'll be back in touch soon. Thank you.